poets. I wish I could be a graffiti artist painting on trains. Rag on my face an anonymous writer that would only be remembered by the imagery of his words, leaving a train of thoughts on a box called canvas, a conductor who has the courage to let the stage move on without him, never being able to hear the praise from the audience around the world that pays attention to his words when they hear the rhythmic vibrations on a track. I wish I wasn't so concerned with how the crowd reacted. But I fiend for that praise that comes from clever wordplay and preaching to the choir instead of challenging them with the deeper message that they would only understand long after they left the room, so I would never be able to see their appreciation. And I realize the wordplay in this poem makes this message ironic as hell, but I wonder, would you listen to me otherwise? I wonder, would I write and perform this poem otherwise? I asked the poets, would you write your poems the same way if you had to perform them anonymously in front of a mute crowd, never hearing their reaction? This is what graffiti artists do regularly. They turn walls into sacrificial altars, bleeding passion on concrete canvases without ever wanting the praise of a crowd. I respect monks over preachers, and that's why I wish I could be a graffiti artist, have the courage to turn my back to the crowd like I was leading them, and view my own artwork as a spectator as I create it. Knowing it's finished when it's powerful, knowing it's powerful when the same words teach me something new every time I'm in their presence. Play can't do that. And let me take this moment to say that this doesn't just apply to poets. It applies to anyone who says they love someone. I ask you, lovers. Hypothetically, if letting the one you love go would result in a timeless smile on their face that you would never get to see, would you let them go?
most people don't love someone. They love the fact that someone loves them, they are greedy, and would prefer to enjoy the momentary smile of their lovers at the cost of an eternal smile they could never see. See, holding on to them is giving them gold. Letting them go is giving them coal. And though gold may look more elegant initially, eventually it's the substance that matters and a graffiti artist who paints on train cars would tell you, coal makes his words more moving than gold. Moving someone is more important than entertaining someone, so I give all of you who I love that piece of coal. That seemingly useless and cliche statement that belongs under your feet. So when life puts pressure on you, you put pressure on that coal. And with enough pressure, that coal will be compressed into a diamond. An indestructible truth more valued than gold. Lifting, raising your soul, your body, and especially your mind. So your thoughts are on a higher level. Looking down at the world with more perspective. And since I love you, I don't care if I'm not there to see you appreciate the beauty I've given you. And I remind myself that sometimes that piece of coal is not just unappreciated, it's unwanted. But I still got to give you that piece of coal because it's the right thing. And I should have never picked up this pen if I didn't want to write things right wrong. So fuck what the crowd instantly appreciates. I'll put a message in front of them that they don't want to see. Like Palestinian graffiti on the Israeli side of the occupation wall. So whether you want it or not. I will give you that piece of coal because I was born a poet, but I will die a graffiti artist.